I took a regular old Roomba, squeezed some high performance motors, electronics and RC gear inside and then hit the road to see if I could set a new record for the world's fastest Roomba. This isn't my first Roomba rodeo and I know a bit about electric RC, but just how fast can a Roomba go? There are a handful of videos claiming to be the fastest Roomba. But I soon found that this isn't a Roomba. And this is definitely not a Roomba. And then I came across this one, and this is the real deal. I also found a story that covers what's inside. It's got bigger motors paired with planetary gearboxes. I estimate that it's good for about 13 kilometers an hour. I'm considering this the benchmark to beat, and I have a concept in mind to achieve it. And to get there, I'm following these four design rules. It has to look like a Roomba. Use two drive wheels, with one motor per wheel, and it has to suck. It will be challenging to fit everything inside the cramped Roomba chassis, and their form isn't optimal for aerodynamics or handling. We need to find a Roomba that's up to the task. I started by removing all the parts from the Roomba. This doesn't take too long as they have a very modular design. I was left with a pile of bits that, as you would expect, was pretty filthy from vacuum duties. So I cleaned them up before moving on. I needed to make some serious space in the chassis to fit the new drivetrain and electronics. This was a lengthy and smelly process, and I was careful to leave enough strength in the chassis. I went with brushed 775 motors that spin up to about 20,000 RPM. These will transfer power to a super strong modular planetary gearbox. To start with though, I'll just be using a 3 to 1 gear ratio, which is the longest available. There's quite a size difference between the original and new arrangements. And of course, there's one for each wheel. In order to fit everything in the right spot, I 3D printed a dummy wheel, which is quite a bit larger than the stock one, to get my fitment right. The wheel design has a positive offset in order to fit over the gearbox and stay within the bounds of the chassis. I printed some plates in PETG that will attach the gearbox to the chassis and checked clearance before installing everything. With everything fitting nicely, I printed a pair of new wheels in PETG. I used TPU filament to print some tyres and fitted them with epoxy. I'm using one motor controller per side and they can handle about 60 amps of power each. I picked up most of these parts at Andy Mark who were very helpful. Anticipating possible cooling problems down the track, I made up some DIY adhesive heatsink compound and attached heatsinks to the motors. I soldered it all together and decided to ditch the heavy nickel metal hydride battery in favour of two three cell lipos. I was pretty restricted with what I could actually fit in there. I could now power it up to program the motor controllers to suit the motors and then give it a test on the bench. I printed a few little accent pieces and then put the whole thing back together. I didn't know what to expect, so I gave it a little run on the workshop floor to start with. <laughs> 
no major damage, just broke this bracket that holds the dust collector onto the back of it. I think I can definitely improve that system to make it a bit stronger. I'm glad I didn't have any electronics mounted in that dust collector. These tyres didn't provide much grip at all on the concrete, but I think we should go and try them on some asphalt. I added some wheelie protection and a Bluetooth GPS so that we can measure its speed. The tyres provided next to no grip, and that quartz surface was very grippy. So I found some urethane rubber to cast some tyres using a new wheel design and a two-part mould. I added a few drops of dye and then poured the urethane. I left them to set overnight, and to my surprise, they came out of the moulds easily. Not bad for my first go. But there was still some room for improvement. Next up, I needed to get those wheelies under control. And to improve the handling, I added some different exponential settings. Oh, and you may have noticed that the Roomba doesn't suck yet. So using the existing power rails, I wired up the rear sucker and front sweeper to a switch on the receiver. Seed Studios kindly sent me one of their Zhao ESP32s, so I wired it up to some LEDs for some night effects. Someone must have known I was coming. one broken gearbox mount and two broken wheels. The urethane tyres are extremely strong though. Here you can see the impact that broke the gearbox mount and a wheel, and then the lateral force that probably broke the other wheel. Time for some new tyres and stronger wheels. I didn't get the moulding quite right again. And four cell lipos that will deliver more power. To make room for them, I quickly realised this was a motors out job. I still wasn't happy with the wheelie control, so I made a little closed mould for the wheel, which worked really well. And I pilfered some bearings from an old drone motor to reduce friction. And then I had some electronic problems with some intermittent pulsing that would kill the drive to the wheels. I suspected that I was running too many amps for the motor controllers, but looking at the software, there was nothing unusual going on. 
I eventually attributed the problem to the onboard 5 volt supply from the motor controllers, I think. So I decided to power the receiver with a step down voltage converter instead, which I tucked away in the back. And now there is literally no more available space on the chassis. Extra power had again worsened the handling of the Roomba. It was a real handful to control. But it was faster after only the first run. The second run was faster again. But that was the fastest I could manage before being forced to retire again. We got that bitch. We've got pretty similar damage to last time, despite the stronger wheels. I think this could be a good candidate for some machined or 3D printed aluminium parts. Or maybe I'll detune it a little for some track time, that could be fun. I'm really pleased with how this project turned out, but it may not be the end just yet. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for me.